welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is quite an unusual car these days, the Lancia Beta Volume X. This model came out in 1984 and it was the ultimate most powerful version of the Lancia Beta that first appeared I think in about 1974 and when I was growing up the Lancia Beta, well Lancias in general you used to see them quite often. There was an HPE version, a state version, so to speak, a bit like the, a bit like the Scimitar GTE that was super stylish. But the Beta was their coupe and the quick one. They did a spider version as well. And this one is particularly special, I think, with the supercharged engine. Now, I've seen some data. It was the first supercharged engine in decades. They used to be popular in the 30s and things, and it sort of disappeared again. And this sort of resurrected it. And the other car that had the supercharged engine at the same time this car was in production was a very famous rally car, the Lancia 037. There's a sticker in the back that says Lancia World Champions, obviously the rally. That year, 1983, they won the World Rally Championship in a Lancia 037. And some eagle-eyed viewers of this channel might have noticed there was a Lancia 037 hiding at the back of the garage around this time last year. And you say, when are we going to see the report on it? And I didn't quite come off as I hoped back then. And it's been sitting dormant, the file, and it will come clearer in a moment why. But I'm going to review this car, but I'm also going to add in the 037 because basically the engine in this supercharged engine is sort of the same as the one in the 037, except that's in a race spec and actually has a bigger supercharger. But there's enough of a link between the two to combine the two cars into this video. Wind the clock back to 1984, the two top models of the Lancia Beta. Well, there was the two litre injection model that cost you £7,570 and that was 115 mile an hour coupe. 9.9 .9 seconds to 60, so 10 seconds. Cars were slower in the early 80s. Then this Volumex edition arrived, late 83, 84, and that gave you an extra 135 horsepower now and 125 mile an hour top speed, nine seconds to 60, but it did cost you a bit extra. It was 8,315 pounds list price. But this car is extra special because the Lancia dealers did a little deal with Stratton uh, Wilmslow. They used to, um, shall we say, enhance Mercedes, and they also turned this attention to this little Lancia. And this is a Lancia Beta Volume X Stratton edition. And you can tell it's a Stratton edition. I've actually got an original price list here, and you've got a slightly deeper um, front air dam, um, black around the radiator grille where all those badges are, the front around the headlights, side skirts down the side, Nothing as extreme as we get today, these different star wheels that I think really suit it. And then a little rear spoiler as well, three-piece rear spoiler. What else do they do? Uh, black chrome in the front and rear bumpers. They're normally chrome on the regular lap from Lancia edition, black on this one. Super, super rare, this car. They think they did nine in period, and they think three still survive today. And this is one of the three. And this car came from a good friend who actually supplied that. Remember that Lancia Thema 832, the one with the Ferrari engine? That's his car as well. And he, he just it restores these almost for love. If you go on to Piston Heads, I notice he's got a, a Lancia uh, Beta um, HPE estate for sale at the moment. And I, th I think it was another car of his. He's in Northern Ireland. They are extraordinary machines. They are better than new, as you'll see in a moment. You did have to pay for this version of the Beta and it has a list price of £9,985. That's £1,600 more than the standard Volumex. That's partly why there's only nine sold in the day. Right, that's the car. Let's go and have a closer look. When you think back when this was new, the competitors out there were well, the uh, Alfa Romeo GT, well, the V6 was the same price as this. Ford uh, Capri 2.8i was another one, but actually by 1984, the trendy car was the Golf GTI and the Sirocco GTI, Peugeot 205 GTI. And like this, they're front wheel drive. And this was sort of Lancia almost with the Fulvia and then the Beta, sort of introduced the idea of a front wheel drive performance car. Does look good though. You know, you think how old this car, this is a 
1974 design but there's something very sharp and it was actually designed in-house this isn't a design house that did this both the Fulvia and then this um, Beta were both designed in-house at Lancia. Now the easy way to spot the Volumex version of the little Beta is this sort of square on the bonnet because it has to house a little bit extra because of the supercharger. Let's have a quick look underneath. This is one of those bonnets that opens the other way. It's quite hard to open, there we are. The um, supercharger is actually there. You can see Volumex written there, loud and proud. That's the supercharger. This is actually air intake. There's an air cleaner there. And then there's a carburetor here. Strangely that the two litre had gone injection, but on the supercharged version, they went back to a carburetor, Weber um, twin choke, um, 36 mil choke. Twin cam engine. This is really the um, Fiat's um, really popular, um, very tunable uh, two litre engine. And it's, can't, it's slanted back because Lancia wanted to get as much weight sort of in the centre of the car handling wise. And you'll see it sort of leans over. I think it's 20 degrees. I wouldn't like to work on it. It looks incredibly tight. You've got um, belt driven cams here. So tight against the bodywork. You can't really see in this light. I'll show it in a minute. But um, a very famous engine. And it's the same engine as in the Lancia 037. And the owner of this car was showing me how, it, if you say, if you order um, a gasket set for it, it says Lancia 037 and Lancia Beta Volumex. So they're the same, really. Base engine is just the supercharger is that much bigger on the 037. On here, it's the smallest um, supercharger and it boosts to well, six PSI, so quite a light boost. Hence the two, 135 horsepower from two litres. It's more about drivability with this car as we'll see in a moment. Lancia often have fun little details and there's one on this bonnet I've just spotted. If you look at these, I thought they were just guides for the bonnet, but no, these are the windscreen washers that then reappear through the holes in there. So when I close the bonnet, there's obviously no hoses going up to them. There they are, close the bonnet, and they reappear there. That's typical Lancia. Some of the details I like on this car, I love how the um, side mirrors actually go through the glass. That's actually through the sort of quarter light. And the other thing, when you open the door, you see fantastic trim inside. And down here are the magic words of Recaro. So you do get Recaro seats in UK um, versions of Volumex. Come round the back. Here's this flip up spoiler. Quite an aggressive little rear spoiler on it, really. And of course, with the beta, it was such a practical, practical car. Huge boot, big black hole. Probably can't see anything in there. But as ever, what I really want to do with this car take it outside, take it for a drive. Yeah, here we are in this. 1984 beta in as new condition when you get in it's still a bit of a shock looking round well, the initial impression I, I looked everywhere to see if i could find a grain of leather none this is the age when sort of injected plastic um, for molding for dash and pockets and doors and etc had come in even the seats, obviously, cloth, Recaros. I seem to be sitting quite high. Oh, there's some leather. I can find some on the steering wheel. Yeah, there we go. Whether that was, that looks newly stitched and maybe that wasn't there from original, I don't know, but uh, nice touch. Steering wheel is actually adjustable. Great big handle down here. I don't really want it any lower anyway. What I want to do is put the seat down, but I can't do that. So I'll put that in the right place. Yeah. Clear instruments, just like on an Integrale. Well, actually, the first beta I read that they came out with sort of white dials and black lettering, and nobody, nobody liked them. Within a year, they'd changed to this look, which is very like an Integrale. All sorts of uh, intermediate dials. I mean, battery condition, oil pressure, oil temperature. There's even oil level as well. A oh, little bit of a stretch for the seatbelt. This wand of a uh, gear stick, five speed on here as well. Yeah, all very familiar. No door bins. The only bins you get are sort of down in the footwell down there that you can't really reach. That was quite common in, in this day and age. It's the same, I can remember on the Alpha GTV. There we are, sparks into life. From outsiders, a slight sound of the supercharger. 
it's like um, an energized sort of alternator noise. Just there's, there's some whirling that you can't quite put your finger on what it is. But uh, that's the supercharger. Very crisp. I mean, the car is still cold, but uh, instant, instant throttle response, as you'd expect. It's reasonable space in the back. I mean, they said, oh, it's not very big in the back. That's pretty big for a, a coupe car like this. Um, so yeah, all good. Right, I'm going to head out and rather than you just joining me when I'm on some better roads, now I'm going to slot in the 037 video. So we're going to roll it sort of from the start when I'm walking around the car and then we'll go out in it. And then, yeah, you'll see what happens and you'll join, you'll come back to this little uh, beta um, once you've seen the 037 film and I'll be on some better roads in this car and I'll explain yeah a bit of background to the 037 so I'll see you later now while the 037 made its uh, competitive debut at the World Rally Championship in 1982 this is actually a 1983 car driven by none other than Walter Roll who came third in the um, Rally of Portugal that year in 1983 the big challenge that year was the Audi Quattro and this being two-wheel drive was it was a battle royal and this was like the underdog you would expect but with all Lance's uh, experience of world rallying they eventually came out on top and there's just the best film the Grand Tour that Jeremy Clarkson did on the Grand Tour look it up it's worth signing up to Amazon Prime just for the video they did on this car this actual car I'll go into detail in a moment but that's the history of this car and it looks so purposeful. They had the Stratos before this car and then whatever was happening in Italy at Lancia, but it was decided that they would go circuit racing and Fiat would go rallying with the 131 Mini Ferrari. And Abarth were on the scene by that point. They tuned it, it had a two litre um, Volumex engine in that car and it was doing pretty well. But then Group B came along and Lancia, this is Lancia's um, chance to get back in the rally scene and this is what this car is all about. Group B meant they only had to build 200 examples. It's a pure competition car, the 037. There is a Stadali version, but it's so stripped out, it was only built so this car could go rallying. And the decision was made to use the well-proven supercharged two-litre engine. They did play with um, having a turbocharged engine in this, but the drivers and um, the bosses of Lancia decided that the supercharged engine was the way to go. Two-wheel drive, they stuck with two-wheel drive, but they wanted to strip the weight out of it. And I've just weighed this car, and it's under a tonne, as you see it here. It's, it came out as 953, I think it was, on my scales, um, which is mighty light. But when you just feel some of the panels on it, you could see why that bit's so light. They are very flimsy. It's a proper competition car. There were actually two versions of 037 uh, World Rally cars, and this is known as the Evo 1. Um, it means it's actually carburetor rather than fuel injected, a little less uh, horsepower because of that 280 horsepower, this one. And it's different at the rear. If I look at this bottom bit where that martini is and those grills on the, on the later Evo 2 ones, that's stripped away and you just see the gearbox on show. Um, but oh, I'm not complaining, it's a very exciting car. Lancia actually had a Monte Carlo little mid-engine car at the time and it's sort of loosely styled on that. The actual passenger cell is actually, we'll have a look in a moment, is the steel shell of that, but it's a pretty tenuous um, link back to it. But yeah, they, it, they called it the Rally when it first came out. It wasn't known, 037 was the internal code Lancia used. But when they launched this car, it was the Lancia Rally, because it had one purpose in mind, and that was to win the World Rally Championship. Now, in true race car style, you can unpeel this car back to the get the mechanicals on show. There's a boot sort of here, the front boot, that quickly opens to, there's a spare wheel on the battery, and you can just get a hint of the suspension here. And there's the Kevlar. Uh, this is just crazy light, um, this panel. But with a little bit of effort, I'm just going to open up the whole thing. Oh, there we go. Off it comes. Now, this goes forward. It's held at the moment. I could undo the wire in that side, but I'm not going to bother. And that will just hang there. And now I'll come round to there and just show you the suspension. So basically what's happening here 
as you can see the original um, tub of the Monte Carlo is about here and, and then they just weld this complete space frame on the front um, to get the suspension they wanted. This is where it goes to Group B spec. Really long wishbones you just see down there all the way because they need the suspension travel. These wonderful damper, spring damper units here as well. Up front there's a radiator, I don't mean a radiator, and a little oil cooler there. But built just pared down and easily adjustable. Obviously everything's adjustable on here. The struts here link with this link bar you can pull together to add a bit of negative to it. But I just love how light it is and how this just, just I can undo that uh, wiring loop and it will all come off I'm sure, but I'm not going to. Right, let's have a look around the back. And it's a great big clamshell at the back. It reminds me of the F40. Uh, oh. Up it comes. It's, it's weirdly heavier than you think it's going to be, this bit. This is the support. Right, two position. Right, you jam that in there. Oh, I've got to lift this a bit higher up. Oh. And there we go. And there we have it. I love it when you just lift up the back. Everything is on show. It's so easy, so simple, so stripped back. Big change over the Monte Carlo, uh, Lancia Monte Carlo, is the engine is now longitudinal. Uh, it's transverse in that car, but in here, they've put it this two litre supercharger. There's the supercharger um, there. Um, they've put it longitudinal, gearbox out the back, all highly conventional, bunch of bananas hanging off the end engine there. Uh, exhaust comes around, wraps around here, all tucked out the way. And that ZF gearbox, I'm guessing you can change ratios, etc. from that at the back. Highly adjustable, you can see your, the amount of toe-in or um, you want to fit on, on here on that tie bar. Lots of suspension travel. Two um, dampers, you can see two giant dampers, the big, big spring. Um, loads of suspension travel. And this sort of space frame keeping it all together, keeping it super stiff. It's, it's unusual that the, um, there's also uh, two um, fuel tanks, I can see one tank there and the other tank there is a filler either side. Dry sumped as well, that's, that, that's in there. Um, but it's unusual that it's actually still on a carburettor. The Evo 2s that came after this were injected and the power went up a little bit to 320 horsepower. But you've got to remember the other Group B cars, the um, Peugeot and the uh, Quattro, they were getting over 400 horsepower at the time. But this one, because it was nimble and it was super lightweight, but yeah, what a wonderful thing just to open it up. And if you're into mechanical objects, I don't think there's much better. Just the lightweight construction. And so very like, like it's like a mini F40 to me, this car. Um, really special. But my favorite detail on this World Rally car is that it's got a number plate. And that means we can take it for a drive. So let's go and do that now. Right. Oh. <sighs> step into this cockpit well first of all everything is so light this door is kevlar again i mean you could you could attach a string to that and your kids could use it as a kite it's that light um five point harnesses you'd imagine a, in a car like this i don't want to make the mistake of doing belts up and not being able to reach the door here we go oh, just do that um oh, oh not a belt hiding there Oh, it's a lot to be said for conventional seat belts. Uh, start, I have one switch. There it goes, sparks into life. Just a taco in front of you as you imagine, well, radical course. Instruments, I have fuel, I have volts, I have a row of um, uh, spare fuses, or well, fuses there. I actually have some air vents, I'm not sure if they work, and obviously the trip meter. Conventional gear change, um, dog leg first fly off handbrake and off we go out in a world rally car yeah sound is going to be compromised on this video for obvious reasons i nearly put a lapel mic on but then you didn't get the car noise uh, straight cut gearbox not sync so we're going to have fun with that uh, um, but I just love it's actually sort of conventional. It's sort of car-like, which is just ace. 
Anyway, I'm going to get out of the village and you'll join me in a little bit, just on the other side of the village. is not what we wanted. I can hear a good fuel pump. Ah, <sighs> to be continued. Well, there you go. Didn't exactly go according to plan. And I have to say, when I when it stopped like that, my initial thought was, well, it'd be a battery lead come off or something like that, but no. Um, we checked that side of the road. Couldn't, just couldn't work out how it suddenly cut. Um, so immediately, it, it was one of those cars that I'd known, um, it'd been a, I'd looked after it for a friend for about a year. It never had any issues. It was one of those cars you could just go in, start, go, that 037. But on that occasion, it just stopped. And uh, 
I hesitated doing anything with the films. Obviously, I thought, oh, it will get fixed. But weeks turned into months, and just couldn't work out what had happened. And it looked like there was a problem with the ECU, and that was a dedicated uh, sort of works car ECU. So it actually ended up over at um, is it Key Sport over in Italy again. And um, I think it's now to check with Hairpin Company. I think the car is now sold to a um, guy in um, Germany. But um, oh, I was gutted because the plan was to just go back to the farm, have a muck about in some fields, and um, yeah, show you what it was like on the loose as well as on the road. Anyway, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that sort of part video. Back to the um, Beta Volumex, and um, yeah, it's all warmed up now favorite bit of road just the the initial impressions you get of the car one I'm, I'm almost feel as though I'm in a Range Rover I'm sitting up high I have real depth of glass I can see the whole bonnet corners of the car power steering all very easy and a crisp sort of engine note um, immediate response thanks to that supercharger and typical suspension of the day sort of taller tires than we get today more compliance and suspension Quite, quite light steering. I was going through my usual compression here. I'm sure it'll cope with this absolutely fine. Yeah. No, I don't know actually. It just just bobbed its nose. It's not as strongly damped as perhaps a, a sports car would be today. Through these, quite a trick rear suspension on these. But first in the front, yeah, it turns in there. Gosh, that's a bit quite sharp actually. Um, yeah, I mean, it is so typical of its day and age. It feels like a sort of um, a Golf GTI of the 80s. That's what, that's sort of what it reminds me of. But just a nice thing. And belying its age, I'm not thinking I'm in a 35 year old car here at all. slow down here and just give you a sense of this sort of engine so I'm in I'm in second if I if I just you can just hear the Christmas of it now I'm gonna pull I'm in second gear just 1500 rpm instant grunt off it goes it, it, it's just a linear power delivery of this supercharger there's no real need to rev it out. You can just use the torque. And the numbers, I'm surprised at the numbers because it's yeah, peak power 135 horsepower for a two litre supercharged car. That's sort of quite low. And the standard injected version is 120 uh, two horsepower. So it's only a 13 horsepower rise with the supercharger. Torque is up to 151, which is about 17% higher than uh, standard. But um, yeah, just not quite the bite from the um, front wheels in, as you expect just when you move the wheel. But again, that's just the age of the um, design of the tyres in this period. Through here, it's pretty neat. I'm going to keep it in third. No need to change that. A bit of roll. I mean, it's a rear anti-roll bar, but then it hauls me out of here because of that torque. And it's a lightweight car, this. So there's not a lot of mass to move about. So just a... A pleasant thing. I think the steering is slightly over light, but it has feel just going through there. I just feel front tire scrubbing. But what a delight to revisit a car that, in my youth, you saw well, not the not a Volumex um, Stratton edition, but generally the Beta uh, Coupe. You saw quite often on the streets of the, in the UK in the late 70s, early 80s, and just what an example this is. Hollybrook is a um, um, name of the uh, company Patrick's company who does these land shoes. Do check them up, they're on piston heads. I saw he has one of these advertised, not a Stratton edition, just a lovely example. And, and again it just thinks, what happened to Lancia? It was like they're at the forefront um, those days. Front wheel drive then came on from after this beta where you think of how you know that was the way forward for sort of junior performance cars. They moved on to the Integrale, I suppose, after this was their most famous model, introducing four-wheel drive to the performance sector. Well, look what happened. They were uh, forerunners on that. So Lancia was right there 
got guessed right on each one and, um, and then have fizzled out to nothing and it, I find it so sad. Saab is another company, 80s, seven, late 70s, 80s, Saab was absolutely there with BMW. You had a choice, what do I buy, a BMW or a Saab, etc. Lunch here the same. So there you go, a bit of history for you on what uh, cars were like from this period. Wonderful, stunning example of this the new owner. This, go, this car goes to its new owner next after I um, have finished with it um, this week. But I hope you've enjoyed this video and a look back at some of the, my uh, favourite cars from the 80s. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.